Hello everyone, this is Grace Wong from the Faculty of Medicine, the Chinese University of Hong Kong. On behalf of my research team, which is under the leadership of our Dean, Professor Francis Chen, I'm proud to share with you our recently published randomized trial in gut. This paper is published in print in the April issue of year 2020 of the journal. The title of our original article is Prevention of Recurrent Idiopathic Gastrodudinal Ulcer Bleeding, a Double Blind Randomized Trial. This is a very special study to me as it started 10 years ago when I was still a young fellow. We spent more than eight years to finish this single center RCT. Everything started in late 1990s as our team observed a very special, distinct kind of peptic ulcers which were not related to Helicobacter pylori infection or use of NSAID including low-dose aspirin. We call them idiopathic peptic ulcers. Patients who bled from this niche type of ulcers had a prognosis because of high relapse rate, as high as 13.4% in one year and more than 40% in seven years. We published our long-term cohort prospective study in year 2009 to describe all these observations. In fact, gastric atrophy and hypochohedria instead of hypersecretion of acid was often observed in patients with this type of idiopathic ulcers. In view of that, we would like to know whether a proton pump inhibitor, the standard, care, standard of care for peptic ulcer bleeding, would be helpful to reduce recurrent ulcer bleeding in patients with a history of idiopathic ulcer bleeding. In this double-blind randomized trial, we aim to test the hypothesis that a PPI, lensoprazole, is superior to an H2 blocker, famotidine, for the prevention of recurrent output GI bleeding in patients with a history of H. pylori negative idiopathic gastrodidunal ulcer bleeding. The sample size of 228 patients was determined based on this. We assume 12% of patients in the famotidine arm and 3% of patients in the lensoprazole arm will have recurrent ulcer bleeding within 24 months. That is a 9% absolute risk reduction. So hence, we needed 114 patients in each arm. Our findings are like this. Recurrent ulcer bleeding occurred in one patient received lensoprazole due to duodenal ulcers, and three patients received famotidine, two due to gastric ulcers and one due to duodenal ulcers. Hence, the cumulative incidence rates of recurrent upper GI bleeding in 24 months were 0.88% in the lensoprazole arm and 2.63% in the famotidine arm. Because of the very low event rates in both arms, the difference did not reach statistical significance. Even the hazard ratio was as low as 0.33 uh, from lensoprazole over famotidine but the 95% confidence interval crossed 1 and the p-value was 0.313. So in fact, what we learned from this two-year RCT was that we, uh, both lansoprazole and formotidine, will have uh, lead to a very low rate of recurrent ulcer bleeding in two years. However, we could not detect or cannot uh, disprove a small difference in efficacy in two treatments. How will this study impact on your clinical practice? Well, we are happy to say that the incidence of recurrent H. pylori negative idiopathic ulcer bleeding is generally low in either the lensoprazole or famotidine arm. But we cannot really exclude a small difference in efficacy between lensoprazole and famotidine, as only one patient in the lensoprazole arm versus three patients in the famotidine arm with blood. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video abstract and will find our RCT helpful to your clinical practice. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.